Coming up on today's show, Tesla sends Powerballs to Ukraine and shows citizens how to use them as portable power banks, Rivian publishes its quarterlies and year-end figures, and Lucid launches a new web series where it tells you how its vehicles work. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. As the illegal invasion of Ukraine by Russia begins its third week, the sheer horror of brutal, indiscriminate bombing has been on display for everyone to see. For many of us, watching from afar, all we can do is send aid. And we do have some links in the description to help you do that. But Elon Musk has continued his own support efforts through SpaceX and Tesla. Last week, we told you about SpaceX donating Starlink terminals to Ukraine and Tesla waiving charging fees on its Ukrainian supercharger network. This week, Tesla has expanded those waivers to neighboring Poland and Slovakia, as well as send truckloads of specially modified Tesla Powerwalls to Ukraine. A YouTube channel called Mobile Powerwall, which we can't verify belongs to Tesla or not, has published a video showing Ukrainians how to hook up a Powerwall as a mobile power bank. Finally, Tesla has told its Ukrainian employees that they can be paid for three months if they decide to return to or stay in Ukraine to fight for their country's freedom. Tesla and Musk don't always do the right thing, but in this case, we can only give praise. It had long been hoped that the COVID-caused part shortage around the world would have started to ease by now. But exacerbated by the situation in Ukraine, as several auto industry insiders have confirmed to the channel, it's just getting worse. This week, we saw more evidence of that. Ford has opted to halt new orders of its California Route 1 and premium trim levels of the Mustang Mark E. Reported by several news outlets this week and confirmed by our local dealer here in Portland, Oregon, the demand for the higher end Mark E premium and road tripping California Route Route 1 has pushed wait times out by an inordinate amount. Ford has chosen to halt taking further orders in order to, quote, focus on building existing customer orders, end quote. For now, if you want a Mark E, you'll have to spec a base level model or a higher end GT or GT Performance, or hope you can find an already built one at your local dealership. It's official, Tesla's Giga Berlin is a go, and the first deliveries of German-made Teslas will take place at Giga Berlin at a special event on the evening of March 22nd. As we detailed in last week's show, Tesla received conditional approval to begin operations at Giga Berlin last week, and now appears to have worked to satisfy the majority of those conditions at the time of recording. While Tesla's official invite to the event shows a gray Model Y, it appears from various posts on social media and Tesla owner forums that every one of those who've been invited to pick up their cars on the 22nd of March ordered a black Model Y performance. Given that black is the only only solid color on offer for Model Y right now, and more complex options are expected out of Giga Berlin from May onwards, this makes total sense. Rivian has published its official Q4 and year-end financials, and with production of its R1T and R1S in early days, it continued to turn a loss. According to official figures, Rivian delivered a total of 920 vehicles last year, bringing in a total of $55 million in revenue. Rivian turned a gross loss of $465 million on those vehicles, which given it's only been making them for a few months, isn't much of a surprise. Overall, despite receiving a huge 100,000 vehicle order from Amazon for its electric delivery vehicle, something it's having to invest money in to fulfill, Rivian recorded a Q4 adjusted loss of $2.461 billion and a financial year 21 adjusted net loss of $4.68 billion. Also worthy of note, Rivian adjusted its production volume estimates downward for this year to 25,000 trucks, citing the ongoing chip shortage as the reason. 
There are significant numbers of academic papers out there that debunk the old myth that electric vehicles produce more in their lifetime in terms of pollution than ice cars. But another complaint of naysayers that fossil fuel power stations will have to remain online to satisfy increased demand of EV charging has just been debunked by a new study from non-profit RMI. It's just shown in its newest report, More EVs, Fewer Emissions, that using the right mix of charging stations, a good local grid mix and smart charging technology could actually lower overall grid emissions rather than raise them, even with an increased EV ownership. This is not only true in states where there's a high amount of renewable energy generation, but also true in states where fossil fuels still account for the lion's share of the grid mix, since grid-connected charging stations can turn off when grid demand is at its highest. Chinese startup NIO has been offering a range of electric vehicles for a number of years in its home market of China, and its latest vehicle, the ET7 sedan, is its most advanced yet, occupying the flagship model position within the brand. Offering semi-autonomous driving, Tesla-like acceleration, and a claimed range in excess of 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles per charge, on the admittedly optimistic NEDC test cycle, the ET7 is due to begin deliveries in its home market of China at the end of this month. In preparation for the same, NIO has begun offering reservation holders the chance to get behind the wheel and experience the ET7 for the first time. Joining the ES8, ES6 and EC6 SUVs in the marketplace, the ET7 is NIO's first sedan and with similar sizing to the Tesla Model S, is clearly meant to cross shop against it. Only time will tell if that's the case. Floridian Governor Ron DeSantis has been in the news a lot lately, partly due to the state's approach to COVID-19 mandates and partly due to its attempts to dictate what schools can and can't teach when it comes to black history and being queer. But now there's a new thing to be frustrated at Florida about, a new bill that Ron DeSantis says he will sign, which would end net metering for solar panel owners. This would make it more expensive for citizens to install and use solar panels on their home. Some critics of the bill even state that it would end most new solar panel deployment, since it would make generating solar power on your roof more expensive and complicated than just buying power from the local utility. It's a move that reeks of lobbyist dollars, and in this case, dollars from the local utility company, one that happens to be owned by the world's largest renewable energy developer. Corruption is apparently alive and well. Oh, and Governor DeSantis, we here at the channel are going to say gay. Gay, 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 gay. Public buses have a hard life. Not only do they travel millions of miles in their lifetime, but they can often be in service for 20, 30 or even 40 years before being replaced. And that means right now there are a lot of smelly, polluting diesel buses still on the roads of the world. But one European company, Seattle Group PLC and its partner, Retromotion, want to change that. They've developed a conversion kit, which they say can transform diesel-powered buses into zero-emission electric buses capable of traveling up to 350 kilometers, 217 miles per charge. While this isn't anywhere near the range of new, ground-up, all-electric buses, it is important to know that in many urban situations, buses rarely travel more than a couple of hundred miles in a shift. And this makes these conversions ideal for city routes, school buses, and more. Whenever you mention the topic of in-demand new electric vehicles, there's always someone in the comments who brings up the topic of additional dealer markups. For those who don't know, that's the practice that some dealers engage in of adding an additional premium to an in-demand vehicle's price over and above the manufacturer's suggested retail price, simply because they can, in fact. In the last few years, we've seen all kinds of crazy markups on both EVs and non-EVs, but in recent months, automakers like Ford and General Motors have frowned on the practice, 
threatening dealerships who do it with dire consequences. So when we heard about a new Hummer EV being listed at three hundred and ten thousand US dollars, we thought it was another dealership getting greedy. But it turns out, though, it's almost as bad. A reservation holder who purchased the edition one and is now flipping it for profit. Apparently, though, it sold. So, yeah. When it comes to sharing, what makes a vehicle tick? Automakers can be somewhat coy. After all, why publicly share what makes a vehicle work when the competitors might be listening? But this week, Lucid did just that, launching a new series which it says will share some of the technical prowess behind its first car, the Lucid Air. The first video published this week features Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson, who spent many years engineering vehicles at companies ranging from Lotus and Jaguar Land Rover through to Tesla, giving a 30-minute or thereabouts deep dive dive into the battery pack of the Air Sedan. I personally love listening to and talking with Peter, and this video is very easy to follow, so if you'd like to know more about EV batteries, make sure you set aside some time to watch it. When Ford unveiled its Mustang Mark E a few years ago, there was much wailing and gnashing of teeth from purists who felt Mustang couldn't be and shouldn't be attached to an electric crossover. Some were aghast at the idea of an EV at all, but others said an all-electric Mustang needed to have the classic Mustang fastback body style. For those in that second camp, then, there's now a new car to lust after, the Charge Ford Mustang EV. It's based on a 1967 Mustang fastback, or at least its officially licensed brand new body shell is. But the rest? Well, everything is new, including custom suspension, custom brakes, and a dual motor rear-wheel drive powertrain. With a four-second sprint time and DC quick charging as standard, only 499 examples will be made. The price? £300,000 sterling. Ouch! We've been waiting with interest as the Hoonigan, aka Ken Bok, has slowly embraced the world of electric vehicles, trading in some of his gas-guzzling Gymkhana cars for all-electric versions. And this year, we've seen him transition his partnership from Ford to Audi with a whole new slew of high-end performance electric Gymkhana models planned. And this week, he shared one of the first cars to come from his Audi partnership. Not a race-prepped car, but a daily driver in the form of an Audi the RS e-tron GT. But being Ken Block, it's not just a stock car. It's been given a custom matte white wrap with black accents as well as custom wheels. Unusually, the front wheels and rear wheels are different designs, but underneath we're told the car is mechanically stock. I don't see it staying that way very long though. Do you? And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel, including some great new content from Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He's been driving the Polestar too, you know. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. We'll be back next week with more awesome content, but until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.